You now have that amazing dream camera. You got that nice, sexy prime lens for those amazing portraits. You finally learn how to maneuver your camera in manual mode so you can get out of automatic. And you got a speed light so you don't have to depend on natural light when taking photos. But you still don't know how to edit your photos to get that professional look. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to edit your photos in Adobe Lightroom CC step by step to get that professional look on your final result. I'm Siobhan Beckford and let me dive right into this video Siobhan Beckford style. So the photo I will be using for this video as demonstration, I took this photo back in 2022 and I believe this was my favorite, well I don't believe, this was my personal favorite portrait shoot from 2022. I love how all of the photos came out from that shoot. They were perfect, the sky was overcast, no direct sunlight, I had my speed light, one light setup, and I was using my trusty 85mm f1.8 prime lens from Panasonic, and the photos looked stunning. Now I'm going to jump into Adobe Lightroom CC. I love Lightroom CC because I can use it seamlessly across all my devices, my laptop, my tablet, my phone, wherever I am. I just connect to the internet, load up my albums as long as they're synced to my account and I can edit on the go so Lightroom CC. And I will also be doing some skin refinement in Adobe Photoshop. So without any further ado, let me boot up the software and start editing. Alright guys, so I'm here in Lightroom currently. I have the photo all loaded up. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys the process of how I achieved the final product. I already have the photo edited, but I will be walking through step by step what I've edited and why I've edited it like that and how I have done it. So without any further ado, let me dive right into this tutorial and show you guys how I did it. So first and foremost, let me show you guys the before. This is the before. This is what the photo looked like. Mm-hmm. Background is a bit too dark. Her dress is a bit too light in my opinion, overexposed a bit. So we're gonna adjust those. Now the first thing I do when editing in Lightroom is fix the exposure. So over here where you have light, exposure, contrast, shadow and all those good stuff. That's the first place I would go when editing. Now, as you can see up here, I didn't touch the exposure too much. I just pushed it to 0.29. The contrast, I love adding contrast to my photos so they pop a bit more, shadows a bit more dark, highlights a bit more bright, and it also affects the vibrance of the photo and the saturation. Now, the shadows, as I mentioned earlier, it was too dark. So I tweaked the shadows, brought it up to plus 47. The whites, I pulled down the whites a little because her dress was too bright, was losing details in the shadows of her dress. So I pulled down the white to negative nine. And I also pulled down the black to negative 15 to have more depth within the photo. I didn't adjust the curves because I already adjusted the exposure with the sliders up here in light. So I left the curves as is and I moved on to color. Now for the vibrance, I pushed the vibrance to plus 25 because as I said, I wanted to have a pop effect. I noticed she was wearing some colorful eyeliners and eyeshadows. I don't know the term, I'm not a makeup artist, I don't use makeup. So I pushed the vibrance to plus 23 and also the saturation to plus two to make those pop a bit more to give off that tropical vibe that's always in most of my photos. Moving on down to my color mixer, I adjust my colors as usual. The red, if you look up here, over her eyes, she had some red eyeliner or eye makeup thingy. So I pushed the saturation on the red to plus 13. 
Moving over to the orange, which mostly affects her skin tone and her hair up here. It's a bit orange. I push that to plus 16. I don't want her skin to be too saturated. So I didn't go over the edge with the orange because it's easy to get carried away and the skin tones get too saturated. Over to the yellow, I shifted my yellow towards the orange side and I didn't adjust the saturation of the yellow because shifting it towards the orange side will also start to affect her skin tone. So I just shift it over to minus 43 in the hue and I leave it at, as is. For the green, I pushed the green over to the aquamarine side of the green spectrum plus 29 in the hue and I pushed the saturation to plus 21 so the leaves in here in the background can look vibrant and give it a tropical jungle vibe because that's the kind of vibe she said she was going for for the shoot for the blue over here I don't remember what this blue is called I call it sky blue I didn't change the hue of this blue I just bumped up the saturation to plus 17 it's mainly over here in the leaves that that blue is let me adjust if you can see closely in the bushes in the background that's where that color is and let me undo go over to the true blue now now there were too many blues spilling on her dress so I turned down the saturation of this blue so her dress could look more white instead of blue look as I move the slider you can see her dress drifting from that blue tone down to a nice true white tone without any color so yeah i bumped down the saturation of the blue to negative 73 over to the purple or magenta ah uh, i keep the purple and magenta at its original value because it's her nail polish if you go too much it will be too saturated and you will start losing detail go too little and her nails will start losing the actual color which they were so i just kept it as is and also for the pinks i pushed the pinks up to plus 15 plus 18 because it also affects her nails so both the pink and the purple seem to affect her nail polish so i just tweak the pink left the purple as is and then i moved on down to color grading now i always tweak the shadows of my photos whenever i'm editing it's just a habit it helps to make the shadows pop more and don't look flat like what the photo look coming straight from the camera so i always put a little blue or teal look to my shadows to give it that cool feeling in the shadows unless i'm going for another look because shadows are normally cool it's a shadowed area so if i turn it off it's warm that orange look around her in the shadows turn it back on it looks nice and cool so that was the look i was going for for the mid-tones i pushed it towards the orange section to enhance her skin tone and also her hair and the overall mid-tones of the photo which is generally her the talent and this is what it looks like it's a bit subtle but it makes a difference i didn't adjust the highlights because i didn't see any issue with the highlights and i turn it down now that i'm looking at it so her face don't look overexposed and yeah that's perfect now moving on i always adjust my clarity always plus 10 nothing higher nothing lower my vignette i always tend to add a little vignette unless the lens i am using has a ton of vignette in or if i'm using an nd filter then i tend to avoid adding vignette but i use negative six for this one and i always try to apply a feather so it doesn't look too obvious around the edges in this case my feather is at 60 so it smooths out the vignette in from the edges coming closer to the center of the photo then move down i don't adjust anything else i don't like adding green to my portrait shots i mostly add greens to my product shots or my landscape shots for portrait i want persons to admire the skin tone the look and other features of my talent if you get what i mean now i always add plus 10 sharpening to whatever sharpen 
safety is already there. So normally Adobe Lightroom CC has it at 40 by default. I bump it up to 50. So that is adding 10. And I always turn off enable lens correction and Adobe CC. I want it to look exactly as it did coming straight from the camera. I don't want any lens correction because it's an 85 millimeter. It's almost perfect. Now, the next step would be to add mask. Now I have two masks in this edit. I have a mask of my subject, as you can see right here. Turn it off, turn it on. It was too bright without the mask. So I added this mask right here to adjust her exposure. So I turned down the highlights and I turned down the exposure just a tad bit. So it wasn't anything extreme. It was just bringing down the highlights to negative 16 and the exposure to negative 1.6. Then I add a second mask down here, as you can see, to emphasize on bringing attention to her face. So you don't stray and look all over the photo. I turn down the exposure down here. So it gradually brings your eyes up to her face so you can focus on what matters the most in this photo, which is the talent. Now, after doing all those adjustments, I would normally move over to adjust any blemishes and imperfections on my talent's skin. Now I have done it all here already. Let me do some refreshing so you guys can see what it looked like before I did the spot healing on her face. Now I'm gonna turn off all the spots that I've removed so you guys can see what it looked like before I applied the spot healing effect and select all the blemishes individually. Now, removing the blemishes before you go over to Photoshop to do some skin refinement will help to make the photo look a bit more realistic and get rid of the blemishes completely because I will be using Neural Filter in Photoshop. It's an AI feature that smooths the facial skin of your talent. But if there are large blemishes and textures in the skin, it will still leave those blemishes and pimples and whatnot on your talent's face subtly so try to remove as much as you can in lightroom before you go over to photoshop to do the skin refinement now if you look closely here let me click toggle the eye icon there were a lot of blemishes on her face and i took the time out and removed them lightroom so this is the before this is the after before after it looks pretty good as is right now but i still want to do some more in photoshop such as smooth the skin and also remove the color from her eyes you know you want the eyes to look white and professional looking so <laughs> i'm going to remove the redness and yellowness from her eyes so they can look closer to white moving right along if you're still watching and finding this video informative and educational so far, remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. Let's resume the editing process. So now we have the photo all loaded up in Photoshop. I'm going to proceed to do the neural filter to smooth her face. Now, gone are the days when we have to sit down and do frequency separation to smooth the face. In some instances, I will have to do frequency separation for like hands and other body parts because neural filter only focus on the face of photos. So in this scenario, I only want the face to be smooth and blurred out to look nice and smooth and give it that pro photo shoot look. So I will be using neural filter and I go up here, let me do it over, cancel. I'm gonna go up here to filters, right? In the top here toolbar, I'm gonna click neural filters right here. It's gonna be loading. Now it's all loaded, I'm gonna click skin smoothing and if blur will be at 50%, that's good. I'm gonna pull the smoothness to about 10 and you can look what it looks like and scroll and zoom in and if that's perfect for you 
then you can leave it as is. I don't think I need more than 10 because I don't want the photo to start looking fake. So I click OK, apply to current layer. Now you can create a new layer to add your smoothing or you can apply it to current layer. You can put it on a layer mask, a smart filter, or even open the smoothening in a new document. But I will just add this to current layer for this tutorial. Click OK. There you go, it's applied. Now, next step will be to remove the saturation from her eyes. And this is the technique that I use. I've been using this technique over the years and it has been working pretty fine for me and uh, I'll just continue using it. So I desaturate, pull down the saturation to about minus 684. Let me put it at minus 85. And then my lightness, I push my lightness to about plus three. It's three, enter. And then I invert this layer mask for the hue and saturation, zoom in, get the brush tool, that shortcut is B. And I put it on the fuzzy brush, not the hard brush. And I turn the opacity up to about 50. 50 and I make the brush smaller, zoom in, hit X while on the mask, layer mask right here, hit X to switch the color to white and I start painting in the eyes to remove the saturation. Now I keep it at 50 so it doesn't look too harsh and unnatural when I'm finished painting to remove the saturation from her eyes and I use a soft brush so it looks natural and blend right in. The hard brush will leave hard edges on whatever it is that you're painting. So I paint the two sections of her eyes because you know the pupil will be in the middle of the iris and that's brown and that's looking good. Now time for the other eye. I'm gonna paint, 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 paint. <laughs> And yeah, I'm gonna fast forward this so you guys don't have to see it, even though I'm done anyways. You gotta watch, watch me. And that's pretty much it. Let me zoom out, let me check, and voila, that's it. The only thing remaining for me to do is to hit Control Save on Windows, and this will allow it to save back to the Lightroom photo. So once you close this, the changes will apply to the photo in Lightroom. So I hit save, close this, and here you go. All the changes applied to the photo in Lightroom. Now if I'm going to be posting this on social media, you know you have to crop for four by five. So I go right here, give her some headroom. She's already nice and centered, hit enter, voila. All this now needs is your logo and you're ready to post to social media. Whenever I'm delivering, I normally give them the full four by six. If they want to post to social media or get it printed, printing is four by six by default. Social media is four by five. They can go ahead and crop it in the social media platform of choice and post it. But for now, I'm gonna clip it to four by five because I'll be posting this on Instagram hit enter and I'll be adding my logo and that's it. That's a pretty short and quick explanation of how you can edit your photos professionally in Lightroom CC. Photo editing is a trial and error process most of the time. We never take a photo, go into Lightroom CC, and the results are perfect right off the bat. That rarely happens. As a photographer, we tend to judge ourselves heavily. Even after editing the photo and everyone loves the photo, they adore the photo, they're pleased, they don't want anything else to be done to the photo. We still 
80-90% of the time we have some flaw or we think we could have done something better with the photo. Rarely we take a photo and we say yes that's a perfect shot or that's a perfect edit. We are always so critical about how our content look and we always judge ourselves heavily well at least we're judging ourselves and not someone else anyways but it's a trial and error process you just have to get editing taking more photos and playing around with editing in lightroom or whatever editing software you use so you can get the hang of it learn new techniques you can try presets you can build your own presets create a style and just keep doing what it is you're doing so you will learn over time from repetitive actions and learning from other creatives fusing their style their techniques with yours so you can develop something for yourself and create a workflow that works best for you we're now coming to the end of another video if you guys found the details of this quick little tutorial of how to edit your photos to look more professional in adobe lightroom and doing little tweaks in photoshop feel free to hit the subscribe button and the like button so the algorithm can like me some more I'm Siobhan Beckford and I am signing out. Stay tuned for more videos like these and I will try to create a more in-depth video of how to edit in Lightroom so your photos can have that more professional look or you can develop a more professional style for yourself so you can have a uniform look. Well, not really a uniform look but a creative style for yourself whenever you're delivering your final product or posting on social media. Siobhan Beckford, signing out. Mercy.